doing a podcast from the car today because I really wanted to reconnect. We have so many new followers, so many new listeners, so many new viewers that I really wanted to kind of reset, just like the name of the podcast, uh, what we're doing here. Because this is a podcast, this is a show for pet parents who are ready to level up their game. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the status quo isn't working. What we have been taught, what we have been conditioned to believe over the past couple generations isn't working for us. It isn't working for our pets. And so what I really want to get across to you today is the idea of returning to nature. So what I want to do is just give you a little bit of that backstory about me, why I'm here, what this podcast is about, and why it is for you. Like what you are going to be getting out of this podcast. So let's jump in. If you are new here, my name is Jessica. I am a certified canine nutritionist, a certified holistic pet health coach, positive reinforcement dog trainer, a dog mom, a cat mom, and your advocate for all things pet health behavior training enrichment because it is my passion to do this, to bring this information to you. And on this podcast, generally speaking, we have so many incredible guests, whether they are integrative or holistic veterinarians, whether they are pet food companies, um, dog food, cat food formulators, supplement formulators, very specific supplements. I will add to that. We very rarely do supplements because I am very food forward. I believe heavily in food therapy. It is what works with all of my clients' animals, with my animals. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is returning to nature. So what does that mean? Well, I want to start by telling you about me, telling you my story with my animals. I have had so many different things happen over the years. I have never in my adult life been without at least one pet. For a portion of my life, I only had cats. And then back in 2010, the end of 2010, December-ish 2010, I got my first dog. So for the past 14 years almost, I have been a bipetual household with both dogs and cats. And I did everything the quote unquote right way for many years, up until around 2012, I would say. 2011, 2012, somewhere in there. And what I mean by the quote unquote right way is I fed the food my veterinarian said to feed. I was buying the kibble from the veterinarian's office. My cats were on like four different kibbles because they all needed something different. I was taking them in at the time I lived in Virginia. For whatever reason, they dewormed animals there quarterly, every three months. Um, they were getting dewormer. They were getting their annual vaccines. They were constantly in the veterinarian's office constantly and I, I don't even if I can magically go back and tally up all the money I've spent in vet bills in my entire life I wouldn't do it I don't want to see it it is an insane amount of money I I, I just don't want to go back and relive any of that and that's not to say that I don't spend money on vet bills now I do just in a different way um, and not as much <laughs> knock on wood right um, not as much so I did everything the quote-unquote right way according to our current society we live in very much a sick care society we call it health care but it is completely sick care uh, it is very reactive and not proactive. So when I talk about returning to nature, I'm talking about proactive, uh, the things we can do proactively in our life, in our pets' lives. And so I have had many, 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 many issues with cats over the years. Um, 
And then with dogs as well. So my first dog that I adopted, she was a hot mess. And when I say she was a hot mess, she was a steaming hot mess. She had, when I adopted her, so they said that they pulled her from a hoarding situation where there were too many dogs on the property. They weren't being taken care of, all the things. That she had puppies almost immediately when she was brought into the shelter system and all of her puppies tragically passed away. And I went to a foster home to find her, to meet her, do a meet and greet, um, which I found at the time was just another hoarding situation. It was, you couldn't walk. There were dogs everywhere. It was sad. At least they were getting some better care, but they weren't all getting the medical care they need, including the dog that I adopted. So she, her name was Claire. She was the most incredible angel. But when I adopted her, she had, all of her teeth were running out of her mouth. She had a mammary gland tumor. She um, had seizures. And it was... I'm going to admit something I have never admitted before. I spent every last penny that I had at that time on her medical care to get her back to, like, quote unquote normal, which would have been normal back then. Um, Had the mammary tumor removed, most of her teeth in her mouth were removed, and then I, I put her on with that recommended for medication for her seizures at the time. And... She, bless her heart, was the most beautiful, kind, loving animal you have ever met in your life. She had so many insecurities. She walked along the walls and would get under the couch. She didn't want you to see her. And what we came to realize in her behavior was that it was likely she was kicked. um, And that may even have been what contributed to her seizure activity. Um, because she wasn't, she wasn't all there mentally. And I, I say that lovingly, um, cause she still was just the absolute best dog in the whole world. But I quickly learned once I started dabbling into fresh food, I wanted to feed my dogs and cats real food. And I knew enough to know I didn't know enough. And so I was adding fresh food to their kibble. And this was way before. This was before I found any other Facebook groups, any veterinarians or influencers to follow. This was just me, my gut feeling, saying, I want to feed them real food and put real food in the bowl for them. And I went to my veterinarian at the time and I said, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm adding to the bowl. I don't want to continue feeding kibble. But I also know she, you know, my dogs at the time is what I was referring to. They need a balanced diet and they know what I'm doing isn't balanced. So that's why I'm continuing to give them kibble. But can you help me take this food that I'm adding to their bowl and balance it so that I can stop feeding them kibble? And he couldn't help me. And he didn't know where to send me for help. And it was that moment that I knew one, that I had to figure it out on my own, and two, that I was going to figure it out on my own. And so I found Dr. Judy's pup loaf recipe, started feeding that, and what I really quickly noticed was that, oh my gosh, when was the last time Claire had a seizure? It was incredible, and I am in no way saying that if your dog has seizures, that a fresh food diet is going to completely cure it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying for my dog, feeding her a fresh food diet gave her body a chance to rest and relax and do what the body is designed to do, and that is to heal itself. And she only ever had one more seizure that was within the week before she passed away. She did pass away very unexpectedly. Um, and I, 
have a feeling looking back that I know what it was, but it was nothing that was diagnosed by the, uh, their, her veterinarian. So I, I don't want to speculate, but it did have to do with breathing. I do think she had a cancer that metastasized to her lungs that we didn't know about. That is my gut feeling, though that was never diagnosed. Um, so I, I can't prove that. But at any rate, um, she was my best teacher in opening my eyes to what real food can do to the body, can how it supports the body. Now, meanwhile, I'm also working on feeding my cats a fresh food diet, which, believe me, if you've, if you've listened to any of my podcasts, y'all know cats are so much harder than dogs um, in so many ways. But one thing that happened with one of my cats, specifically King Tut, was that he was having some really bad ear issues. I didn't know what to do. The vet had pretty much given up um, and said, here, you know, put some revolution on him in case it's ear mites. This will take care of it. He needs two doses spaced out however many days. Okay. He gets the first dose of revolution. Meanwhile, these are indoor cats. Um, so they were not getting flea and tick medication like they were when they had access to the outdoors. Now that, you know, they had been indoors for many years, they were no longer getting flea and tick medication, um, which is a whole other episode. I have talked about it before. We can talk about it again. You just have to let me know you need that. Um, he got a chemical burn from the revolution. And when I brought it up to my vet, he was like, he needs another dose. And I'm like, you are out of your mind. That's not happening. This is the same veterinarian, by the way, who couldn't help me with the food. And um, not that that is unusual. I'm not shaming him for that. Um, most veterinarians, unless they are holistically, um, integratively inclined, are not going to have a whole heck of a lot of knowledge about nutrition outside of what they learned in vet school, which is very, very limited and sponsored by, depending on what vet school they went to, Hills or Royal Canaan. Um, maybe Purina. I think it's mostly Hills and Royal Canaan though. Um, so that unless they take the initiative to educate themselves outside of vet school on nutrition, they're not getting a whole lot of education on nutrition. Um, so one more thing happened, which is something that a vet tech did, not my veterinarian. Cats cannot metabolize prednisone. They are prescribed prednisolone instead. So dogs can metabolize prednisone, which is a steroid. Cats cannot. Cats need prednisolone. And um, I had a cat with IBD. He was prescribed prednisolone. The vet tech filled prednisone. And that was a problem. And um, a big problem because IBD... There's like this really fine line between IBD and lymphoma and um, diagnosing it isn't easy. So it's kind of assumed that if IBD goes on long enough, it can potentially turn into lymphoma. Sometimes IBD it is diagnosed when it's actually lymphoma and vice versa. And there's, there's a lot going on with that. There's also an episode, by the way, with the two crazy cat ladies all about IBD in our kitty cats. It is older. It is on the YouTube channel and on the podcast. You can search for it. Um, really, really great information, by the way. Wish I had known back then. And the vet tech uh, filled it with prednisone and not prednisone. And obviously the veterinarian profusely ap apologized because he had a whole month of it and was really like not doing well. And I'm like, what is going on? Why he's not, you know... He's not responding. We're not getting the results we were looking for. And then come to find out they filled the wrong medication. And that was just kind of the last straw for that particular veterinarian um, and me and the relationship that we had. But not that it was his fault, but, you know, there were just too many things. I digress. The whole point of this is that if we take a step back and we look at nature and we look at how nature provides. We look at how 
the vast majority of pharmaceuticals are they have taken something from nature and pulled one piece of it because you cannot patent nature anything that exists in nature you cannot patent it so they will pull one piece out of the puzzle of that plant or whatever it is that is providing benefit to humans or animals and they will patent that because they can take that and make it in a lab and it can have some benefit but also lots of side effects because guess what we're not using it as nature intended and when we look at what we're feeding the vast majority of people in the united states this is you know what i'm talking about now are feeding our pets it is not natural period end of story there are so many podcast episodes where we have talked about you know behind the scenes people who work in the pet food industry how truly insidious it is and how you know we really just need to realize that our pets are not landfills and this is not the ideal food to be feeding them and we wonder why they're so sick if we just look back how does this work in nature now i'm not saying that that's going to be a hundred percent of everything that's going to solve all of our problems but it sure as heck is a good foundation I am thrilled that we have the technology and medical advances that we have today because sometimes they are needed. I am not anti anything. I am pro nature and using what is available to us in moderation and as necessary. Um, you know, there's a lot of understanding about the overuse of antibiotics now, and we really can take that back to literally everything because we're not we're not living in nature the way we are intended to which is really detrimental to us and to our animals so that's kind of the whole point of this podcast is helping us giving us little pieces of the puzzle here and there because you never know what's going to trigger that one thing that aha moment in somebody's life to make that change and one change leads to another change. And it's this domino effect that is so beautiful once we start, once we get there. And so that's the point of this podcast. It's not, look at me and look at my story. I'm telling you my story so that you understand that this could be you too. And also, at the same time, by the way, don't beat yourself up for things you didn't know in the past. I've been there. I've done that. I don't recommend it. Please don't do it. Um, but the more we know, the better we can do. So I just wanted to kind of just do that little reset for all of our new listeners, all of our new subscribers, so that you understand what this podcast is all about and how I am here to help you be a better person, be a better pet parent. Because I know in my journey, the better pet parent I've become, the better I've also been able to take care of myself. And I want that for you too. So I'm going to go ahead and end today's episode. Thank you so much for being here. I hope if you haven't already hit that follow or subscribe button that you go ahead and do that now because this truly is a podcast for you. It is for you. Um, everything I do, everything I bring you, all of the guests I bring you are here to speak to you. Not to sell you anything, though some of them do have products that I do find very useful and wonderful and recommend. Um, not every product is going to be right for every person or every animal. So when I can bring something new to you that I trust, that I recommend, I will do that. Um, but mostly it's about the education. And that's what the guests understand as well. Because that's what they want for you and your pets is just to do better. It doesn't have to be with their product. But to get this education out to people to better our lives and better our pets' lives. So with that, thank you so much for being here and we will return with another incredible guest next week on the Pet Parenting Reset. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode and please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. 
Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside.